Greetings all, this is Dickie Adams with PocketNow.com, and today we're taking a closer look at the hardware of the Nexus S 4G from Sprint. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. As we mentioned in the unboxing video, the Google Nexus S 4G from Sprint is a Google-specific phone. Uh, it is running a 1 gigahertz Hummingbird processor. It uh, has 16 gigs of internal memory. There is no micro SD slot. Um, size and weight is pretty light. It does have a curved screen. Um, and again, it's really hard to see here, but it curves on either end here. And when you lay it flat on a table, uh, it lifts the edge up just a little bit across here, uh, keeping the screen from actually touching the, the ground. On the back, it's got another little bump here. Um, purely for aesthetic purposes, although it does provide a little bit of a, a gripping point. Um, the back piece here, this back plate, um, is very uh, fingerprint uh, prone. As you can see already, I, I just cleaned this and it's already picking up fingerprints. And it's very, very slippery. I, I hope that they get some options to uh, replace this with a matte back. I'm, I'm not a big fan of this particular um, back here. Uh, on the sides, we've got a uh, power button. And I really like the power on and then power off little fade effect. That's uh, really kind of fun. Um, not terribly useful. Volume rocker on this side. Other than that, no other buttons. On the bottom, it's got the um, micro USB slot, the uh, microphone hole, and the headphone jack. Headphone volume is... Uh, outstanding uh, as expected. I appreciate that they moved the um, these two ports to the bottom of the device uh, because on my um, Sprint Epic uh, 4G they're on the top which makes cabling a little bit funky to manage. Uh, also on the front is the uh, 3 megapixel or 0.3, pardon me, uh, megapixel uh, VGA camera for front-facing uh, camera capabilities. The um, speaker for the headset itself, not the speaker phone, there is the light sensor and the um, proximity sensor as well here. No LEDs on the front of this uh, as far as uh, indication lights uh, for charging or for um, messaging or anything like that. A bit of a disappointment there. Um, down here at the bottom, the... Uh, Touch sensitive um, standard uh, Android buttons here are bright in this particular view, but when compared against the Sprint Epic uh, 4G, they are uh, really, really dark. I'll show you that here. Brightness comparison there. It's pretty obvious uh, that the um, Nexus S 4G is uh, considerably darker in that case. Uh, Volume from here is plenty loud, uh, no complaints there, um, no complaints about the audio quality when I've been in calls, which I appreciate. Uh, on the back, the speakerphone is seems to be quieter than my uh, Sprint uh, Epic 4G, but other than that, it, it does a decent job of, of volumes there. Back camera and the flash, back camera does a pretty good job, and what a lot of people are reporting and uh, what I'll be testing as well is that even though the back camera has uh, 720p recording capabilities, the Google software does not have that uh, functionality. I'll be testing that and we'll be posting that in the full review, uh, let you know how that really works. Popping off the back cover here, if I get it from the right side, uh, you'll notice inside here is a couple of little uh, contacts and then the uh, near field uh, chip is hiding inside of here. Uh, I haven't had a chance to find anything yet that uses near field. Hopefully uh, something soon before I finish the review. Uh, we'll see about that uh, when we get there. Um, other than that, it's just standard black plastic. Um, speakerphone, uh, your contacts for the uh, near field chip. Uh, the battery, as we mentioned in the unboxing, is uh, a 1500 uh, milliamp hour uh, battery and the battery life has actually been pretty decent uh, getting in with uh, an hour of uh, hour and a half of phone calls and uh, some navigation and uh, web browsing and the display on and little Google Music app uh, ranking in there about 12 hours uh, more if I'm using more of the display but so far I've been pretty pleased with uh, the results there otherwise interior uh, not a whole lot to see. There are a couple of extra uh, data ports here. Um, 
that uh, are unused from a day-to-day -day point of view. Um, it's pretty standard and straightforward. This is essentially when it comes down to it. The same Google Nexus S, but with a WiMAX antenna. And looking at the uh, uh, WiMAX functionality and the data uh, capabilities, it's been so-so. Uh, and I unfortunately, I haven't found really good zones with 4G for Sprint anyway, uh, which uh, is a really a pain when they charge you an extra $10 a month. Uh, we'll come back to that once this finishes booting up. As we talked about before, the screen is uh, brilliant, although um, it is a little hard to see from here. Uh, and once this finishes booting up, we'll... Um, take a closer look at this. But as you tilt the phone away from you, um, there is a little bit of color change here. Uh, not too terribly much. It's definitely bright and brilliant. And in sunlight, it looks uh, fantastic on auto uh, display, which I appreciate uh, very much. Uh, let's go take a look at those speed tests before it gets a chance to try again. So uh, as far as results go, I've been getting anywhere from like 1700 down. I had a 2300 down at one point uh, using the 4G service. The uh, 3G service is the uh, 400s you see here. Um, the This 71 and 76 was actually with the 4G on, uh, but I wasn't getting good service. Um, so you can see we did plenty of speed tests here, and it's just been... Uh, average results, but it's pretty typical compared side by side with the uh, Epic. It's been about the same speeds, uh, running the speed test exactly the same time. Comparing the screen brightness side by side between uh, the two, um, my Epic 4G and the Nexus S 4G, you can see that the um, Epic over here has a slightly more blue screen. Uh, it is a little uh, less bright. Uh, this is on full brightness on both devices. Um, and uh, the black contrast on the Nexus 4G is, is much, much better. The Nexus 4G, though, does have a, it's hard to see in this video, um, a yellow uh, color cast to it. Side by side, as you can see here, the Epic 4G and the Nexus S 4G, both from Sprint, there is a considerable size difference. And as we mentioned in the unboxing video, the uh, Nexus S4G is about the same size as the keyboard here. Uh, you could actually stack two of them on top of each other and end up with one uh, Epic 4G device. Uh, so the, the form factor is really nice in the, in the pocket. If I look from the bottom, it's uh, about the same uh, there. And then also from the uh, top lengthwise, it's about the same as well. One thing the Sprint Marketing talks about on its site is the anti-fingerprint coating uh, on the front of the uh, display. And I have to tell you that this uh, device picks up fingerprints just about as easily as every other device uh, that I've owned, uh, including the iPad. It does make, um, you know, wiping off the screen is really easy. Uh, but, you know, as soon as you touch it, it's going to get another fingerprint on it. Uh, so I'm not sure where they were going with that. Uh, and I mentioned on the back, it's just as fingerprint pone as, as the front. That wraps up the hardware portion of our video review. If you have any comments or questions, leave them below, and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Thanks for watching.